Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Bevy 0.15 release candidate process is well underway, which means fewer major features making it in as the release candidates stabilize and the official release gets closer. In the meantime, we've got grappling hooks, marching cubes implementations, and game jam games to cover. We also see the alpha period start for Untold Dawn, a roleplay required text-based multiplayer game. And that brings us directly into the showcases this week with Bevy Remote Inspector, which is a React app editor for Bevy made as an alternative to Bevy Inspector eGUI. Currently, it requires 0.15 release candidate 2. Next up, we've got a game made for a one-button jam. This game is about giving a school presentation made for a local one-button game jam event. It is, of course, also available on itch.io if you would like to play it. And next up, Settletopia gets a lighting implementation on the CPU. It's calculated on the CPU so that various information can be shared more easily. And Wasabi 16 now runs on the web, which means you can go play it, and includes a debug view that visualizes draw calls. Now, the draw calls that are visualized are the cartridge's draw calls, not Bevy's draw calls. And then we've got some FPV drone-like shenanigans, where the FPV drone, I guess, is flying through a terrain generated on the GPU via marching cubes. I say it's a drone, I guess, because it's really just a camera at this point. And this is a work-in-progress octahedral imposter. Imposters are a level of detail approach where geometry is replaced with simple, flat pictures of themselves. Do you like cats? This is an implementation of asking the users questions with Bevy ASCII. That is A-S-K-Y, not A-S-C-I-I. -I. In this case, whether or not the user likes cats. And this is Nominal, a 3D solid modeling app running on an iPhone using Facet for constructive solid geometry, Impulse Drive for physics, and others in a reusable set of plugins. This is currently using vanilla Bevy 0.14. And Bevy Copperfield, which we've covered before, is a Bevy plugin for procedural modeling that now supports automatic UV unwrapping. Here you can see a UV texture, and that is the result of automatically unwrapping this geometry. The paper Least Squares Conformal Maps for Automatic Texture Atlas Generation was used in this implementation and is linked on the website. Next up, we've got Rock Run, which was originally created to learn Bevy. This project evolved into a small educational platformer to make math and reading fun. The example runs on the web, native, and includes a link to the source. In-world crafting recipes were added to polders this week. The game uses a custom cell shader in combination with Bevy's own shadow maps. Later on in the week, it also got a boat. And a small warning for the next one for people who don't like direct eye contact in photos, these are potentially human characters that are being added to this game. You can see them here in a cluster, and here's a bit of a close-up. For our next showcase, we've got a Marching Cubes implementation that uses portable SIMD to be able to mesh an 8x8x8 grid in one microsecond. And for Marching Cubes, we go into an MVP dungeon generator using Eller's algorithm. This algorithm will be expanded to carve out rooms, and in the future, Prim's algorithm might be an alternative that gets used. This demo shows off Visibility Graph Pathfinding, which is an implementation of Visibility Graph Pathfinding using an algorithm called a supercover. And this showcase is a grappling hook made using Avian 3D. The rope is composed of square segments connected by spherical joint, and a distance joint with zero distance is used to connect to the player in the end. And we've actually seen this demo before. This is a live on the web version of it, which is a molecular explorer. The source for this one is also available on GitHub while this showcase is a remake of the author's game in Bevy, including the distinction of enabling multiplayer for the new Bevy version. That is, of course, why you can see two windows here that are both showing pretty much the same thing. And GTR is this developer's first game. It includes implementations for player control, enemy interactions, and score tracking. And with that, that brings us to the crate releases this week. First off, we've got Tiny Bell, which is a set of convenience macros for logging or discarding errors. This is instead of returning them with question mark or panicking with unwrap. This crate is a bit of a holdover until we can integrate better error handling inside of Bevy itself. And then we've got Voxy 0.2 alpha release. Voxy is a voxel engine for Bevy, now with support for named scene models from Magica Voxel. And Cargo Sweep V2 is an interesting case. Cargo Sweep is used in GitHub Actions to prevent cached target directories from snowballing in size. And while not directly Bevy related, is used by the ecosystem, including in Leafwing Studios' cargo cache. And into the devlogs this week, we've got one major entry into the devlogs. 
That is Untold Dawn, which is a roleplay required text based multiplayer game written with Bevy's ECS. Untold Dawn is going to open its door for Alpha on November 5th. After a two week pre alpha period just ended, the game has seen a couple of hundreds of accounts created with a few persistent connected players and has seen very low CPU usage. If you're interested, as the website says, which is linked to on our website, click on play now and follow the instructions. And finally, under the educational heading, we've got this Bevy 0.14 to 0.15 cheat sheet. This is a cheat sheet built from the author's experience migrating their own applications from Bevy 0.14 to Bevy 0.15's new release candidates. And of course, over on the This Week in Bevy website, we have a list of all of the pull requests that were merged this week, the issues that were opened, as well as the new pull requests that were also opened. The vast majority of pull requests that were merged this week were bug fixes for the release candidates and other assorted similar changes. I largely expect this to similarly be the case through the next couple of weeks as we finish up the release candidate cycle, with the large exception of potentially a WGPU upgrade. If you're interested in what's left to do in 0.15, you can check out the milestone over on GitHub. And as always, I will see you next week. Have a great rest of yours.